that he is the CEO of in3d.com, which provides 3D models of social media and augmented reality. How am I doing? Close enough. I know. I don't even know what I'm saying to you. Uh, so I'm waiting for a speech to help me. But what I do know is that this very bright young man is practicing in a cutting-edge technology on the very edge of all of our technologies that are uh, being so um, profoundly described and practiced here tonight. So please welcome Elvis Bridges. Thank you, uh, future fans and futurists in the audience. It's great to be here. Uh, I love the topic of, uh, of the TEDx Del Mar, the big picture future. I've been waiting for quite a while uh, for a TED to uh, tackle this topic. So today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about something I call the Main Street Renaissance. There are big changes coming down the pike for our local communities, and some of these will be very surprising to you. Some of these will be very large in scope. Some of them will be you know, smaller, but the, the, big, the big picture that I see for the next 10 years is lots of disruption, lots of change, and lots of need for adaptation. So why do I care? As a kid, I grew up in a Latvian Lutheran church camp. This gave me uh, a unique perspective on life. Uh, I, was, I found myself often torn between two different cultures, the Latvian American culture and the, and the American culture. And it's not to say that one is better than the other, but what I did learn from growing up in, you know, from spending all my summers in Latvian camp was that songs, um, was that games, um, ARGs that we played, um, the, uh, the tales that we told um, to one another provided a cultural glue that brought a lot of us Latvian Americans together, uh, you know, for, for, for these bonds that lasted our entire lives. I subsequently wandered through life trying to apply a lot of these lessons um, that I had learned from my Latvian American uh, upbringing to the rest of my life. And, uh, and that brought me through reality television, through gaming, through social media, and, uh, and finally to In3D, which is a geosocial media company. Um, as, uh, as Ginny uh, described, we focus on uh, virtual worlds, social media, and augmented reality, and try to blur all those together in a nice little package for a location or for a town. And you guys are getting uh, the first sneak peek ever of the site. What exactly is a healthy community? What's a healthy town? It turns out that the Centers for Disease Control of the United States have their own definition of this. A community that is continuously creating and improving those physical and social environments and expanding those community resources that enable people to mutually support each other in performing all the functions of life and in developing to their maximum potential. So this sure sounds a lot like climbing up the hierarchy of needs through the quality of bonds, through the number and the quality of bonds that you have. And th this is something that I learned from my you know, Latvian American um, predecessors that handed down these cultural values to me. A strong network looks like this. There's, there, there are lots of bonds, they're copious, they're strong, and there are a lot of diverse connections, so that when people need to solve problems, they can tap the network and very quickly come up with a solution. A solution like this, for example, you know, like a, a great image um, of folks coming together, working on a problem, creating value. Unfortunately, that's not really how we feel, that's not really what's going on in our culture nowadays. As Robert Putnam so eloquent, eloquently described in 2000 in Bowling Alone, our geosocial capital, our local geosocial capital is dwindling, is dropping. There, it's not to say that there aren't communities that are exceptions to this rule, but by and large, uh, it, it's pretty clear that things aren't the way they used to be. You know, people uh, tend to spend most of their time at home, people spend time playing video games, People spend time on the web. People don't develop these rich, deep connections to their local communities that they once did. The result? Something like this. <laughs> Technology certainly shares, you know, it takes the lion's share of the blame. Um, at the same time, technology is also a big cause for hope. Technology, information, and the 
socioeconomic forces at work right now in the United States are conspiring to form a perfect storm for our for local community for local community development. When discussing this, it's really important to talk about the info tech drivers and the socioeconomic drivers because you can have very powerful technology at work, but if there's no will to implement it, um, as Dean Kamen and Thomas Edison have so um, often stated, then not much is going to happen. But enter accelerating change. This is the big pic picture future that we're talking about, so we got to go as broad as possible. Technology is doubling faster than a single human generation for the first time in the history of the world. Kurzweil's law of accelerating returns. Information is doubling at a staggering rate. I mean, it, it's, it's yearly or, or bi-yearly. Um, the rate of communication, uh, as measured um, in social media, uh, Zuckerberg's second law, his observation is that we share roughly twice as much every year as we did the previous year. Um, there's an astronomical amount of email accounts in the world, and there are some odd billion SMS messages sent every day. And that number just keeps steadily rising. Uh, capability, too, is rising. Um, if, if you delve down into uh, this thing called the Flynn effect, um, you'll actually see that IQ has been rising steadily since 1903. Um, we're not sure whether or not these gains are going to continue, but it sure looks like they will, and it sure looks like this is convergent with technology, information, and communication. These macro trends are enabling something called the metaverse. Um, Acceleration Studies Foundation um, put together a document called the Metaverse Roadmap, which I uh, was fortunate enough to participate on. And they identified four areas that are converging to uh, provide for uh, astronomical uh, growth. And, and to form a new type of platform from which a lot of other behavior can emerge. Um, we've got virtual worlds like Second Life, mirror worlds like Google Earth, uh, rich video, YouTube, you know, uh, the ability to transmit video very quickly, and augmented reality. Um, that's when you hold your iPhone up and you see you know, all the local restaurants um, you know, that match your preferences, like uh, via Yelp or, or, or things like that. So this is a, an amazing platform that's coming into being thanks to accelerating change. Drilling down a little bit further, there's this thing um, called the Golden Triangle that uh, Super VC Fred Wilson um, has talked quite a bit about. And, uh, and this is more, the Golden Triangle focuses more on, uh, on social behavior. It, it, it takes into consideration the convergence of the mobile web, the iPhones that you hold um, as you walk around, which incidentally, there will be more um, iPhones in 2013 than PCs. Uh, the social web, there are some 450-odd million Facebook users, about 120 or 150 million Twitter users, um, and then the real-time web, um, which, which is Twitter. The, the small increments of innovation are taking the form of apps, and there is a veritable app explosion underway. There are already 200,000 iPhone apps, there are 30,000 Android apps. There are a bunch of BlackBerry apps. Windows 7 phone series, I'm sure, is going to be coming out with their own apps. And it's you know, reasonable to assume people have forecast that in about a year or two, we're going to cross the million app threshold. And then who knows, by 2015, I mean, we could be talking about 5 million apps, 10 million apps. There could be an app for a tree. There could be an app for a bicycle. Enter the internet of things. You know, apps proliferate as uh, software gets commoditized, just like all other information structures. And then finally, um, the thing that actually makes all the previous uh, points relevant to you know, local communities, to people who are spending money on advertising, who are trying to get return on their investment, is, uh, is the appearance of, these, of new metrics. It's now very easy to quantify your web traffic. You know, Google Analytics rocks. Um, people are quantifying um, attention, the, the way that people view videos and, and really getting um, down to uh, a super granular understanding of the amount of time, the amount of time, and the the features that feature, pe people pay attention to while watching a product, uh, wh while watching a piece of media. Um, you, you've got these eyeball trackers, you've got these blood pressure gauges. I mean, it is a total science. Um, and then you know, 
At the same time, we're getting all these new uh, models of you know, healthy social networks. We're, we're figuring out what is healthy, what is desirable, what is not desirable. Altogether, you know, these, five, um, these five infotech uh, drivers you know, form a, a complex mesh of tools and platforms that we can now use, we can rely upon to generate new value, to strengthen our community bonds. But we have to want to do it. The will has to be there. If, if there's no social will to match the accelerating change, then nothing is going to happen. Fortunately, or unfortunately, you know, uh, the, other, uh, the other half of the perfect storm consists of items like unemployment. 10 to 20% of Americans are out of work. The recovery is not restoring jobs. Um, we're losing more jobs to automation, and we're going to lose way more jobs to global competition. I mean, startups all over the place rely on Odesk and... Uh, and other outsourcing tools to find people that will do work really well for cheaper rates. And, uh, and that's a big issue. And it ultimately will force um, a community, a local community reaction, and it's already doing that. You know, number two is the market forces that are bringing large companies into communities. Uh, the location-based services market is projected to be $17.5 billion in 2012. You know, there are giants like Google, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Yelp, City Search, all venturing into the space. And then there are a lot of innovative small startups like In3D or uh, Foursquare or uh, Gowalla, uh, name 50 more. I could probably rattle off 50 or 100 if, uh, if you gave me 10 minutes. Additionally, cities are finding that they are in a competition with other cities. You know, keep in mind that we're not in a vacuum, so they're competing with other cities for creative, uh, creative individuals, they're competing with other cities for educated individuals, and they're competing with other cities for information workers. You know, cities that do a good job of attracting top talent thrive more. I mean, a lot of recent research has supported this. Um, another trend, the rise of the prosumer. So, I'm sitting at home in my small town, um, I'm out of work. What do I do for income? Well, it turns out that I can do a lot of small things for small bits of cash. You know, if I become a, uh, a blogger, a notable blogger in a particularly interesting area, I could get high CPM and earn money through uh, advertising. You know, um, I suspect that over time, uh, if I contribute photos or if I contribute other media to large companies like Google, that they're going to have to start paying me more. They already do pay me in the form of free Gmail, in the form of free storage, in the form of Google Docs, all these productivity tools that are awesome. That is, I think, a medium step towards these companies actually starting to pay people outright. And number five, escalating culture wars. I think the choices ahead of us are very divergent, and different communities are going to choose to exercise technology and solutions in very different ways to very different ends. Some communities value their privacy a lot more than others. There will be communities that shift towards total open transparency. You know, there are going to be economic models that support these. But the main point here is that these, these five different trends are creating a situation where people in local communities are looking for solutions. They're freaking out. And um, through my job at N3D, I can, I can already kind of tell. Um, when we go in to talk to local communities, they're already thinking about the competition aspect um, versus other communities. Um, they're thinking about how to draw resources in. They're thinking about how to make more of their marketing budget. They're trying to figure out what's going to happen you know, to the community um, newspaper and to those marketing outlets. So now that we've got this perfect storm of these um, socioeconomic and technology drivers, uh, what can we do specifically in the near term to prepare ourselves for such a future? And here's five, here are five practical steps that uh, I assembled and, uh, and I think that, uh, that you can use 
to get acquainted with the new technologies and to start dabbling in the new behaviors that will allow your local community to take control in the new environment. Number one, get the tools. Get the iPhones, get the Android phones, get the Windows Phone 7 series. You know, get, get an iPad, you know, put a Microsoft Surface um, in a town building somewhere, you know, if that's in the budget. Definitely get on Facebook, get on Twitter. I mean, people are doing it already. Um, you don't need to be open and share everything, but you need to know how you can leverage these tools or how other people in your community can leverage these tools. Number two, identify power users, mavens, and stakeholders. Um, David Spark, a, a media theorist, uh, writes about the importance of super users. And uh, they are super key. Uh, in my previous uh, social media enterprises, we found that a lot of the traffic and a lot of the attention is generated by a very small subset of very invested people. And they, are, they exist in every single community in the United States. They exist in my hometown of Elko Park, um, in the Catskills, they exist here in Del Mar, they exist in cities, they exist in North Dakota, they exist in Latvia. Creating a map of your key human resources is absolutely essential to bringing them to bear on the problems that we all you know, are going to face over the next few years. Once you've identified these key assets, bring people together. Use Meetup, use PlanCast, use Skype. You can now do, um, I think, four, you, you can have four or five people engage on a single Skype chat. Um, go the traditional route, use conference calls. Um, you can use online forums. Um, the most important thing, though, is to get the folks who are invested in making change together so that they feel like they're not alone and so that they together can um, create plans and strategies to uh, you know, take this behavior to the next level and to start generating value um, you know, towards whichever um, you know, direction your, your community wants to go in. To form your action plans, there are a lot of new tools available as well. Um, if you're doing uh, planning on a community level, Google Earth, 3D models, right there. I mean, that results in, uh, reduce, greatly reduces the errors in communication and, and uh, you know, zeroes you in on consensus quite a bit more quickly than looking at plans and, and not have, you know, having a, a diverse group of people who aren't all engineers um, in the room. Um, use augmented reality you know, um, to, to plot you know, tours around your town or, or to uh, you know, create, a, create a KML file um, that you know, brings you around to problem areas so that people can experience these things firsthand. Uh, use Google Moderator, you know, like a, a very similar to Dig, uh, in, order to, uh, in order to see which ideas float to the top. Um, and then, you know, of course, use your tr traditional social media tools, you know, Facebook and Twitter, to uh, communicate as well. And then finally, execute. There are a lot of great new tools for execution as well. Kickstarter allows you to fund ideas. Um, once they get a certain threshold of cash. So you can say, we'll fix the well if we get $500. You know, plan begins. Basecamp is a great productivity tool that uh, a lot of programmers use. Google Wave, um, a little bunky right now, but it's, uh, it's definitely the future. Uh, Microsoft SharePoint, 99designs, use contests uh, to get content for your town. And ultimately, ultimately, we need to Stay positive and know that these magical tools will pop up in our hands and that they will allow us to overcome the new challenges that these same tools and these crazy conditions that we're living through are going to present to us. So in summary, I'd like to thank everybody here, uh, the, the TEDx organizers, City of Del Mar. And uh, if you want more info on this, that's, that's, uh, th those are all the links where you can find you know, my blog in 3D and uh, the Metaverse Roadmap. And uh, finally, I'd like to, because this is uh, the big fu picture future, I'd like to leave you with a, a, a quote that uh, is uh, a favorite among futurists, and that's by Arthur C. Clarke, that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Accelerating change is about to put magic into our hands, and it's up to us to decide how to deploy that magic. Thanks a lot. Thank you.